All right. So now we're going to the kettle, which is when we boil. And I have, I'm going to hear talk about, about hops, which is, uh, which is a plant. And I have to put it in mind. Here we go. They're related. They're related. All right, so so hop is the the spice of beer, and and, and hops is a, a plant. It's a vine, Fumulus lupulus. It's a member of the cannabinaceae family, and the other major member of that family is cannabis or marijuana. Um, the hop vine, the, the essence of uh, the hop vine that we use in beer is the flower of the hop, which I show I show you a picture there. Um, and the essential element in the hop that produces the flavor is the lupulin gland. That was one of the questions in the trivia. And the lupulin gland is essentially uh, the pollen um, sac that produ of, the of the hop flower, which produces the resins and oils that that's used in hops, or that's used in beer. So the, the flavor components of hops are uh, the essential oils, uh, there's supposedly 300 different kinds of these essential oils, but the key one that is used is this mycerin, which produces um, hop flavor, or a hop aroma. And um, the, the essential oils are often damaged uh, in the boiling process, so this is often used in beer in, in the process of dry hopping, which is the adding the hops uh, in the fermentation process, and the first, the primary fermentation, the secondary fermentation, or sometimes they add it to kegs or barrels of beer in the old days. Uh, and then the main component is hop, the hop resins. In the hop resins in the lupulin gland, there's the three essential uh, resins, the humiloin, the cohumiloin, and the adhumiloin. Uh, and I'll talk about those a little bit more for you. Okay, so why do we add hops to beer? Well, basically three, four different reasons. One, it'll produce bitterness, flavor, aroma, and stability. And as far as bitterness, um, Bitterness is essentially what produces the balance in the beer. In the old days, they used to make beer um, uh, with spices. They called it gruet. They used to put all sorts of psychotropic uh, plants in their beer. And then there's a movement away from that uh, to just add hops and hops. Uh, well, we'll talk about that at the end. But anyway, so it produces the, the bitterness in this balance. Uh, so, uh, so the beer is complex. It's kind of like tannins and wine. It's a balancing concept. Uh, and, and, and we measure bitterness in hops based on what's called alpha acids. And the measurement of these alpha acids is the IBUs, which is International Bittering Unit. And there's a calculation for calculating those. You might read about that in your, your, on your beer bottles about IB, IBUs. Um, flavor, uh, again, this is the resins of the beer, and, um, and then the, um, and that's in the middle of the profile, so if, you're, if you have an amber there on the flight, you're going to be tasting the flavors in the middle of the beer. And the aroma is, is the human one, and then finally the stability in the shelf life is the, um, the beer, or the hops has antibiotic properties, so it, it will actually inhibit um, bacterial growth. So back in the old days when they put beers in uh, wooden kegs, often you get a lot of bacteria, sourness in the beer, and the hops kind of would inhibit that. So, uh, and, and also hops um, will, you know, give beer longer shelf life just in the bottle. Okay. So how are hops used? Isomerization, that is the process of basically boiling the hops. And what it does is it converts, um, it, it, you know, the humuloin, for example, into isohumuloin, and it gives it more stability. Um, and hops in, in themselves are not a very stable product. They will degrade, they oxidize in the bottle, they, they lose their character. Um, for example, um, Heineken beer can become light struck, you know, in clear bottles or green bottles, if you ever have a skunky beer, that light will actually degrade and um, pops over time. So the isomerization is the boiling of the beer. We get it from different lengths of time. The boiling depends on how bitter, how much bitterness or what kind of flavor you can get out of the hop. So the bitteringness uh, is from 60 or 30 minutes of boiling. Flavor is 30 to 35. These are kind of ranges. There, there's no precise uh, cutoffs here. And then aroma is the five minutes to the end of the boil where you turn off the flame, or dry hopping, as I mentioned, where you add the hops to the finished beer. 
or Waltz for many. Okay, and then the major hop varieties. Essentially, there are um, hops break down into aroma hops or bittering hops, and then there's kind of some in the middle. But uh, there's something called noble hops, which are traditional hops. They have low cohumuloin. Cohumuloin is a more of a harsh bitterness. If you've had a beer, it's a little harsh. Um, and so noble hops are low in that, but they have a lot of humuloin, a lot of uh, flavor character. Um, and then the bittering hops, the commercial brewers like to buy uh, hops that have more bitterness in them, uh, higher alpha acids, so they don't have to buy as much hops. So um, anyway, so there's some, there's some varieties of hops that are just meant for bittering, but you could actually use aroma hops for bittering, you just have to use more of them. Uh, traditionally, there's the European varieties, German, Czech, uh, English hops, and then there's the American varieties, which were first trans. Hops are indigenous to America, but they were imported uh, European varieties, and then America kind of developed its own hop varieties in the Pacific Northwest. And um, now there's been actually in the last five years there's been a crossing of hop varieties in America, where they're actually doing all sorts of experimentation, producing hops that are. Um, produce different resin characters. All right, so hops and specific beers. Um, there are hops in almost all styles of beer you may not just perceive them. So for example, in box or wheat beers or blonde ales, um, they'll use hops, but again, it's just used to, for complexity and balance. Um, traditionally, uh, Hallertauer Mitteluf is the uh, classic German aroma noble hop, and that's used in German pilsners. There's something called Tettinger and Pearl, which are used in German pilsners. Saws, hops, are used in Czech pilsners. Um, there's Fools and East Kent Goldings. Um, they are aroma hops, and they're used in English bitters and pale ales. And then uh, they have the American style hops, which are Cascades, uh, Amarillo, Simcoe, Crystal. But those things are um, in, used in IPAs and pale ales. So I am now going to go on to fermentation. And I'll pass around. I have some uh, hop varieties here that you can uh, crush and smell them. And just give me my hops back because I'm going to brew it. <laughs> Yeah. Pardon me, you don't want to eat, try to eat the hops. With the malt, that was fine, but now the hops. But do smell the hops, because they all do smell quite a bit different. Yeah. 